Hey guys, it's Sutton with LA Airsoft, and today we are going to be going over our brand new CO2 to HPA adapter, how it works, what's on the inside, how to set it up, the benefits, and everything else. Let's get into it. So first, let's talk about how this system works. So essentially, instead of screwing on your regulator to your big tank here, as you can see, you screw the regulator directly on to this adapter piece and then you are able to screw on CO2. Now we sell both 88 gram and 74 gram CO2 cartridges. Both have this M16 threading that is standard and works with our adapter. So you can use either one, just depending on kind of your size preferences as well as volume preferences. So to set this up, all you have to do is screw it into your regulator and then you can screw in the CO2 of your choice. Note that there are these Umarex um, adapters that you can buy that you actually screw on to your CO2 prior to screwing it into the unit. And what this adapter does is it simply has a pierce pin on top that allows you to safely remove your CO2 cartridge before having to empty it all. So if you're one of those players that wants to use part of it and then be able to unscrew it and screw in a new one if you're worried it's gonna run out mid game, or if you just are done playing for the day and want to disconnect your gas, this is the way to do it with these little adapter pieces here, but they're not required and you can screw in the CO2 directly onto the unit. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this system. So starting with the pros, this CO2 essentially replaces this HPA tank. So you are getting way more shots per volume with CO2 rather than HPA. It's almost three times as dense, so you're getting almost about three times the shots per volume um, as compared to an HPA tank. It's also way smaller, as you can see, and whenever you run out of a cartridge, all you have to do is unscrew the cartridge and screw in a new one, and you're back to playing. There's no more having to go to a scuba store or go to your airsoft field to have to refill these tanks. This is especially awesome for people that are in Milsim that are playing outdoors and don't have to go back to their car to run uh, and grab a new tank. Or for the people that are playing in their backyard, run out of air at home, and they don't have to go somewhere. This is really simple. It's replenishable. All you have to do is unscrew this unit and screw a new one on. Um, really, really great. Also, it is such a small unit and lightweight compared to this setup if we have the HPA tank with the normal regulator. And obviously this tank's a little bit larger volume wise than some others, but just to show you for reference, this is so much bigger um, for what it is and for the volume size. So unbelievably smaller, lighter. You can run this in your pocket, you can run this in a backpack or a belt and you're not gonna be limited by this big tank. Now, I'm not gonna screw this in all the way, but I do also wanna point out for those of you that run the lined HPA uh, grips, this also works with that. So you can screw the adapter and the CO2 directly on, and it creates such a great profile that you can rest up against your shoulder. We actually are planning to make sleeves that go on top of this cartridge so that it actually provides some rubber padding and almost creates a better um, feel for your, your shoulder whenever you mount this versus a normal HPA uh, grip and tank. So this can really be used for all applications, milsim, high cap of players, indoor, outdoor, any HPA this can be used for and the benefits really outweigh the costs um, with the compact size, the lightweight, the amount of volume you're getting gas wise. And also, our CO2 is completely food grade. It's not like those cheap 12 grams that you'll buy online. This is completely food grade. We've shot 10,000 rounds through this. And although we do have a cleaning filter in our adapter, um, it actually has not gotten dirty on us at all, even after 10,000 shots because our CO2 is so high grade. So you don't have to worry about your gun um, getting dirty or anything from this air. This is completely clean and safe air because it is the larger cartridges that have to be food grade regulated. So now let's get into the specifics of the unit. So when you receive your unit, you're gonna see these 60 hash marks here and you might be asking, well, what is that? And I'll show you guys how to set up this unit. So all you have to do is essentially screw it into your regulator and you're good to go. However, on the inside of this unit, let me get this to focus here. So inside this unit is a flathead cutout 
And on one of the sides is a little dash that indicates the upward part of the unit. So to set it up, all you have to do is configure this so that the upward facing part faces towards the sky. And I'll explain why this is in a second. So when you get your unit, basically if you're running it vertically, meaning that you have your regulator on top, then you don't need to worry about adjusting what's called the inner baffle of the unit. Now, what we built in for the inner baffle is if you're running the unit sideways, we basically want the area where the gas is coming out of the unit into the regulator to be facing upwards. And what this will do is prevent if any liquid CO2 were to get into this um, middle part here, it can't come out the top because obviously with gravity, the liquid will go to the bottom, the gas will go to the top. So what these numbers are is to help you indicate where the top of your unit is whenever it's completely screwed in. And then you can actually adjust the inside baffle to face that direction so that only gas can come out because it's coming out of the top of the unit. So in this instance, I just screw in to set it up. You only have to do this the very first time you use it. You screw in the adapter to the regulator. And so let's say in this instance that I wanna run my regulator where the gauge is facing upwards and I wanna put this essentially on my belt where the hose is gonna be at the bottom where I can connect the hose. So this is how I'm gonna run the setup. So I'm gonna run obviously my CO2, my adapter, and my regulator where the regulator is facing downwards. So all I'm gonna do is screw it together, then I'm gonna look and I'm gonna say, okay, this is the top, the part that's gonna be facing upwards, and this hash falls right around about 38 or so, 37, 38. And it doesn't have to be an exact science, but you essentially screw in the unit, see what number the dash falls on that's facing upwards, and then I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and simply rotate the inner baffle and that little indication arrow until it gets to 47 or 37 or 38, like I set up here. Simply all I've done is adjusted that inner flathead part and the indication arrow to be facing upward right around the 37 to 38 mark. And what that's gonna do is all of the gas now is gonna only be released at the top part of this unit. So if I screw this back together, again, it lines up around the 37 to 38 mark when it's facing at the top. And now the baffle is adjusted so that only gas is gonna be let out of the top part of this unit. So now, anytime I screw in a CO2 and play, as long as I just have it in the same configuration on what side is facing upwards and downwards, I never have to worry about liquid CO2 getting in the unit. Now, we've really not seen liquid CO2 be able to get in the unit regardless, but this is just an extra safety measure that we had having this adjustable inner baffle so that you can adjust where the actual outflow of the gas is so no liquid CO2 can get in your regulator. So to recap, the only setup needed on this unit is to screw it into your regulator, see what side is facing upwards if you're mounting it horizontally, and then to adjust the inner baffle to face that direction so that, again, the air can only come out the top. This is a one-time setup you do on your gun, and then it is good to go. You never have to worry about it again on the inner baffle. Now, for you guys that really wanna know what's going on on the inside, I'm gonna unscrew this unit just by using a big hex screw in the front and kind of explain what's going on on the inside. And Polar Star has diagrams that we posted on our website that breaks all of this down for you if you're curious on the breakdown of this as well. So on this inside face, we have the adjustable baffle, as you can see right here. And there's a tiny slot that's cut out for it to, well, let's see a two to go at the top. So as you see, if I push out this top adjustable baffle, you can see this little cutout, which is actually where the top part um, of the adjustment, I can rotate this piece and this top little notch is correlated to the cutout here. Again, only allowing air to come out the top. Also on the inside, we have a secondary baffle, again, to allow the gas to expand on the inside and then enter into the second adjustable baffle area before the gas actually comes out of the unit. So it's allowing the gas to expand and then allowing it to come out the unit only in a certain direction. Um, really, really complex unit on the design here just to ensure maximum um, compatibility and consistency and no liquid getting into the regulator.
And then on the inside of this unit, we actually have obviously the pierce pin set up on this side that actually pierces the CO2. And then on this side, if we unscrewed this, you would see a cleaning filter as well as check ball here um, that basically just helps with the gas when it initially goes into the unit, keeps it pressurized. And then also the cleaning part here that actually keeps any dirty air or anything from getting into the unit. Again, since this is such high grade CO2, we hadn't really seen this to be a problem, but we really wanted to implement not only just a unit that was an adapter, but really had all of the features from the adjustable baffle to the cleaning rod to the expansion chamber itself that really allows this unit to be what it is and work pretty much flawlessly. Um, and yes, obviously the reason for the volume on this unit as well is because it is a expansion chamber. So it allows the CO2 to expand from liquid form to gas form before going into the regulator, given the size and this uh, volume is plenty for the pressure of both the 88 gram and the 74 gram cartridges. So guys, this has been an overview showcase and setup of our new CO2 to HPA adapter. We really think that this is going to replace HPA tanks in a large capacity due to all of the benefits, of course. Uh, we sell all of these parts on our website. This adapter will work with really any regulator. We do recommend the Polar Star just because we know the compatibility, but we've tested with the Storm Category 5 as well as others and not had any problems. We also sell the 74 gram and 88 gram CO2 cartridges. The 74 gram is the only 74 gram on the market with the proper threading for this adapter. Um, and so really guys, we have the whole system here. The CO2 is the cheapest you can buy it really anywhere for the unit price. Um, it is readily available on our store, laairsoft.com. And we also do sell the Umarex adapters if you wanna be able to unscrew your CO2 before using it all. We have some great bundle deals on these as well as some subscription plans for the CO2 so that you can continue to have it shipped to your house every month and actually save even more money. So we're really trying to make this the new way to play for HPA guys. So if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and we will definitely have some more content on this coming out in the near future. We're very excited to bring this to market over a year in the making. Um, so until the next one, take care guys and we will see you around.